Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of the Motorspirit EG6. Uh, today we've got quite a big job ahead of us. I'm going to say today and probably tomorrow, uh, and that's all the time I've got. Um, so, as I said in the last episode, um, I'm going to be sorting out a swell part. So, I purchased the FCS race fuel cell. As you can see there, I've kind of taken a few bits off just to work out some space already. Um, that's the fuel cell. Now, although that's a gravity-fed baffled fuel cell, because I've lost 10 litres of capacity, um, even though I wasn't able to really use that last 10 litres in the tank before, I still want to, I want to make sure that I can use every drop of fuel that's coming out of the, <laughs> coming out of the car. So I've bought a swell pot set up, um, and this swell pot is going to go underneath the car. I don't want anything inside the car because I don't want the fumes for starters. Uh, and you have to firewall it off anyway, and it will just look a bit messy inside the car. So I can just have it all under the car, nice and clean, and it's out of the way. Um, the issue I've got is fitting this swell pot in under the car. I've really got two options. Yes, yeah, so I can basically, I can shift the tank over, which I have done already. I can shift it a little bit more. Um, I'll need to move this strap across a bit, but that's easy enough. So I can fit the swell pot up in here, in this gap, uh, and the pumps. It'll be quite tight, um, but it's, it's all in this space and it makes my life a little bit easier. Uh, it's still tucked up, it'll be below the level of the fuel tank anyway, so we're not going to have bits hanging down, maybe a line. Um, so that's the first option. The second option, which I've Oh, I kind of do want to do but I don't want to do at the same time is cutting the boot floor out or the trunk floor um, yeah so I could cut this out all the way up to this frame rail and then just flat line it across um, and obviously fill in the gap under, above the subframe um, I could cut that out and I did purchase the fittings in the sizes and shapes or angles to do it under the boot um, but I didn't realize that I would have space next to the fuel next to the fuel cell itself um, so I might have to adjust a few of the fittings but yeah it'd be pretty cool to cut the boot out but I also have to consider you know I'm starting to make a lot of modifications to the shell itself and if I ever write the car off and I have to excuse me and I have to reshell the car you know it's, it's putting a lot more time into what I need to get done um, you know, if I had to reshell the car, which would have to be a quick job anyway. Uh, so, yeah, decisions. But we've got the fittings. We should be able to get the job done. Um, I just need to work some things out. I've got a feeling that if I put the if I put the swell pot in this space here, I'm going to have to lose the handbrake cable, which obviously means I lose the handbrake. Um, which would save a bit of weight, but I like I like using the handbrake um, as a bit of a staging brake as I set off on the line with races. Um, it does me well. So yeah, it's difficult. Um, I'm gonna have a think and work some bits out and I'll come back to you and then we'll start cracking on with what I need to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to pull the tank out and check the fuel sender because it doesn't seem to be sending any signal to the, the gauge on the dash. That's a quick job. I do need to fix it because I do want to have an idea of fuel level. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Uh, hopefully sort that out. That should be fairly quick and then we can crack on with trying to get this swell pot in somewhere. I've just pulled out the fuel level sender. Uh, I'm just going to test it to make sure it's actually working. Then I can check the wiring down to the front of the car. Um, so it always it's a simple sort of resistor-based um, sender. So I've got my ohmmeter here or my multimeter. 
and all I need to do is make sure that as this, as this would raise inside the tank, the resistance should increase. Now the earth, it's earthed across the, uh, it should be earthed across the body and then you've just got a main sort of sender wire, single wire thing there, so, which is why it's isolated with rubber from the, the rest of the body. So, I should be seeing some resistance as I push this up, so I'm gonna try and hold this all together. I need like three pairs of hands here. Okay, so there we've got 180 ohms. Okay, and then so the resistance goes down. So that is working, as you can see there. So we go from 180 down to one ohm. If you can see that, probably not. So that says to me that this actually is working fine. Back to 180. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wire this up inside the car, or I'll wire it up to the car and uh, just see if we can get a minimum and max sort of level sent on the uh, car itself. So we know this is working. Um, yeah, we just need to work out what's going on with the wiring. Okay, so I've just wired up the fuel sender. Um, start again. All right, so I've just wired up the fuel sender, so that's it. Obviously sat on the side there, and as you can see, I'm still showing zero fuel. So let's just crank it up and see if it actually gives us anything. Zilch. <laughs> Zero. So I reckon... Oh, did that just flash? Am I just seeing things? Oh, it is building up. Interesting. So let's see how far that gets. So it... Okay, so it looks to me like that does work. I just need to set the parameters on the K-tuned thingy majiggy um, so I'll have to dig out the instructions and see how that works um, it's building up though so we'll see how we get on uh, yeah oh that's stopped yeah so that's stopped at what like two thirds full not even that just over a half what's that five eighths in American speak crazy imperial people um, yeah, so, right, cool, so I'm happy with that, so that was a bit of a wasted effort, but at least we know that does work, and I know that full is not full, so I need to adjust that thing. Anyway, that's that done, let's crack on with the uh, fuel pot of swelling. Alright, you bunch of big cheeses, so I've managed to, what am I going, where am I going? So I managed to sort out the fuel sender, uh, basically on the back of the Q, Q? K-tuned uh, converter thingy, there's a little brass adjuster. Um, it just adjusts the resistance, so I wound it up, and now we can get a full tank out of the thing. Um, also, I've measured up a few things, and I think I'm gonna be able to squeeze the lot of it next to the fuel tank, so I don't have to do any cutting of the boot. Um, yeah, just to save a bit of time and effort, really. Um, so I'm gonna put the fuel tank back in now, and then we'll just work out some placement um, I'm definitely going to have to lose my handbrake cable um, on one side. Let's put some light in here. So I'm going to have to lose this. Um, and I'm just wondering if I can get away with staging, because it only needs to hold the car still, uh, if I can just get away with keeping one handbrake cable in place and using that um, as a sort of staging brake for launches. Hmm, we'll see. We'll find out. Okay, so I've just had a good workout and think about where things are gonna go. So, pulled the handbrake cable out of the way. So yeah, basically I'm, I'm gonna be able to fit the swell pot in there. I'm trying to get away with not cutting the body as, you know, as much as I can, because it, it just, I'm just considerate of uh, having to reshell, God forbid, and all that, but um, it's just points, you know, for consideration. Uh, so, I can fit the swell pot in there. It just about sits in line with the bottom of the, the car there. Uh, the car's got good ground clearance anyway. What I'll probably do is look to build a, um, a cover piece that will just cover it up to the subframe on that side. Um, something to, you just lighten out of aluminium probably just to cover it all over as a, as a sort of skid plate. Anyway, I can fit the swell pot in there and the fuel pumps, um, I wanted to try and mount it on this flat here, but it's just not enough space in between to run all the plumbing. So I'm gonna have to come as far forward as I can. 
think we're going to make it work. The tank should be able to shift back about 10 to 20 mil. Um, I've got enough space for the return pipe there. The return off the, uh, well, for it to be from the swell pot is um, a 90 degree fit anyway, so that's fine. This fuel filler will be quite tight, but again, it's not something that sees a lot of flow. It's only for filling the tank. So that shouldn't be an issue as well. I don't think I'd be able to fill it any faster than, you know, than it could push itself through that pipe. So that's the plan at the moment. Um, you've just got to be quite considered when you do these things and make sure that, you know, you, you can still work on the car, you can still get things done and it's not just going to cost you a load of time. Um, especially when you're trackside and you're pretty much living outside for a weekend. You know, you want to be able to get things done pretty snappy and pretty easily without having to pull loads of bits apart. Um, so that's what I'm really considering. Um, just making things as easy and accessible as possible. So I've got the pumps in their cradle. I see I've got one facing forward and one back to go in and out of the um, swell pot. Uh, yeah, so once I've got the two pieces mounted, the plumbing should, fingers crossed, be fairly simple. Then I don't think there's anything that's going to cause really tight bends or you know restrict the flow. Um, Obviously the, the plumbing between the pumps and the swell pot's fine. And then everything that goes to the tank and to the engine is obviously going to come from this side. So I'm going to route up here in this space here between the fuel cell and the straps and then it will come down this side. So obviously one will go up to the return. You'll have the return coming back from the engine and then the feed into the engine. Um, so that's but that's also fine i can just i'll get some decent hose clamps to mount them pipes nice and proper uh, and also you know under here as well i'll make sure it's all rooted nice so yeah that's where we're looking at the moment it's gonna be nice and compact quite tight um but yeah i i think we're gonna be fine with that yeah just sort of just going through a lot of thought process at the moment trying to work out how i want it all um, but I think that's going to do it for now. Let's get this pot mounted. Um, I'll work out how I'm going to do that. And then we can mount the pumps and plumb it up. And then I'll need to run. Oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> I think for now, I'm just, for the wiring side of life, I'm just going to splice off the original pump wiring. Hopefully it doesn't pull too much current and blow a fuse. Um, just for the sake of moving it around here because like I say in two weeks it's going to get rewired and I'll have separate switches for each one uh, and that'll be that done. Right, let's crack on. 